We need to make sure that when people flee from war, that they receive protection and that there is coordination uh, in your okay. 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 Hi, good to see you. Hi, how are things? Um, I say a few words if that's okay. Um, firstly, I just want to join with colleagues in utterly condemning the senseless and unnecessary and unprovoked attacks on Ukraine, the Ukrainian people by Russia. What we are experiencing and what we are witnessing is a blatant disregard for international law, a blatant disregard for the sovereign territory blatant disregard for peace across Europe and beyond, but above all, a blatant disregard for human life. And it is it's very upsetting uh, to see the scenes that we are seeing. And that's why Ireland has been very strong in our support for Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. We support the strongest possible sanctions. Uh, we support uh, the need for humanitarian assistance. And we've already provided 10 million uh, euro in that regard. We have lifted visa requirements between Ireland and Ukraine. Uh, and we will do more to make sure that those who seek solace, that they will find that in Ireland. Today I'm meeting with colleagues um, of the Interior uh, and we will of course listen to our colleagues in those member states who are directly impacted where there are hundreds of thousands of people already crossing the border. It's important to hear from them what it is that they need, what support that they need and above all that we act um, in an informed, a comprehensive and a, a unilateral and a strong way. Minister, is Ireland prepared to block the sending of lethal, lethal weaponry to Ukraine under the European Peace Facility? So we're not going to prevent any other member state from providing that funding or from sending any types of weaponry. Uh, we have a long-standing position, however, of not uh, doing that. Uh, what we will provide is humanitarian assistance, we will provide additional funding, uh, and we will make sure that those who are seeking refuge or seeking solace, that they will get that in Ireland. We won't block any other member state from providing that. However, we have a very long-standing position of not sending weapons, uh, and that position hasn't changed. Minister, one issue now under discussion today is the invoking of the, invoking of the Temporary Protection Directive was never used before by the EU in this talks that it may be. Does Ireland support that? What we support is any mechanism that will protect people who are fleeing. Obviously, this is a mechanism um, that, if invoked, supports directly where you have a, a mass influx of people who are crossing borders and, and who are moving uh, to seek solace. Um, of course, I think we need to look at initially what it is that those member states require and need, what it is that these citizens need. Uh, but if necessary and if required, uh, then that's something that we will consider and it's potentially something that we will discuss today. And any decision on um, any Ukrainian refugees on their way to Ireland? Or is there stuff going on behind the scenes about getting Ukrainians now into Ireland? Or any update on that? Well, what we know in the last few days is that we've had a relatively small number of Ukrainian people arriving in Ireland. The vast majority of them are arriving to meet with family members or friends. They have connections in Ireland, uh, but there is a number who have arrived and who have sought uh, international protection. We'll obviously monitor that over the coming days. Um, as we've made very clear, anybody uh, who is a Ukrainian citizen who wishes to come to Ireland, whether that's seeking international protection or to join family members, they're welcome to do so. And we will, of course, provide support, um, provide a accommodation and provide whatever is necessary uh, to keep them safe. Minister, would you like to see Putin on trial for war crimes in The Hague? Uh, I think we need to uh, make sure that there is a very clear response and a very determined response to the actions that he has taken. Um, he is in breach of international law. He is waging a war on people who have not asked for this, who do not deserve this. Um, and I certainly think that every option needs to be kept on the table. The first and foremost, our response needs to be, though, keeping people safe, making sure that Ukrainian people are safe um, and that we can support them in whatever way possible. Thank you. Is, the, is the path paved already for people who want to come to Ireland? Like, is there any administration that needs to happen? Because I, I've heard anecdotally that it is extremely difficult for people who are trying to get there. And just on the International Criminal Court or the ICJ, um, is there a discussion taking place about some sort of tribunal or what happens next with Putin in relation to breaches of the Geneva Conventions and international law? Well, firstly, in relation to people coming to Ireland, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. Um, a lot of people can come, uh, as I've said, to join family members or relatives. There will be some who will seek international protection. Beyond that, whether we seek to have some sort of an arrangement with our European colleagues, that's still under discussion. Uh, and Ireland will not be found wanting in the same way we have uh, provided a, an Afghan programme, in the same way we have supported Syrian families. We will do the exact same here. This is the discussion that I'll be having with colleagues, the same as Minister Coveney later on, and the same as the Taoiseach. Um, in terms of what happens beyond this now, our focus is on uh, the, the war that is happening in Ukraine, making sure that we can support Ukraine, all of their citizens, um, and obviously what happens beyond that I think we'll, we'll, we'll have to keep under discussion. Could you give us a number, Minister, on how many Ukrainian refugees Ireland is preparing to receive, willing to receive? 
We don't have that number yet. Um, obviously, colleagues are working together at the moment to see what that possibly could be. Um, we know that there are anywhere between 2,500 to 5,000 Ukrainian citizens in Ireland. Some of them have Irish citizenship already. Uh, so even if you take into account their family members and friends coming to join them, you know, that number could be, could be any kind of a number. But we will keep this under consideration. And if any decision is taken um, that requires a collective response from all member states, Ireland certainly won't be found wanting. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.